my reference for the tuning was just a coincidence, you know, I was in 73 when I was starting to play, I was self-taught and fooling around with different tunings, tuning down, touching my mechanics and really enjoying what I was coming up with. And that guy came this way for me, completely by coincidence. This is only years later that I was told that that tuning was also the tuning used by Debbie Graham from England and that he, he, he sort of covered a lot of ground with it. So, you know, just a coincidence and then Irish music was part of my life then and, and it made a lot of sense to, um, to try to play those tunes in that tuning. But I was also using a lot of different other tunings. It's only in 78 when I, when I received my Loudon guitar from, from Ireland, from George Loudon, that I made the choice to really use one tuning and, and stop studying the guitar like any uh, any formal uh, you know guitarist will will, will uh, study standard tuning right and I made that guy my standard tuning um, so so you're saying that when you were young you actually experimented with many different tunings mm -hmm. before you settled on dad gad mm -hmm. would this be something you'd recommend to someone who's trying to train their ear and kind of well I mean find a way into but you know it's not like you try to train your ear I mean you, you your ear is your ear is your is your heart, is your blood. For me, the guitar is, is a medium, it's an instrument, and this is what I have in my hand in order to put, to, to, to put out loud what my brain is all about. A good piece of music is a piece of music that can be played on a guitar, but that could in fact be played on any instrument, because it's music. So you have the music served by instruments, you have also the sort of immediate music that instruments like to produce. Yeah. In the case of guitar music, when you put your fingers, you know, all those different moves and ways for the fingers to, to move and to progress through the fretboard, that makes also sound which are organized in a musical way. Does it make music? I don't know, right? But it does make <laughs> sounds that we like to hear. Yeah. It's a good incentive process to get into the music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a good incentive process to feel confident, like, Technically, you are you are going to places, so you you are in fact able to deliver something. Right, right. right. Now I think the, the 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 next step is to and to forget those things moving your fingers and the fretboard, but to go back to your imagination and and imagine what you would like to hear that comes from your heart. So it's kind of a process, an adventure of the heart and the imagination that is reflective of the guitar and involving the guitar. Yeah, I mean... But it's something, the music itself is something separate from the guitar that can stand on its own. It's very often separate from the guitar, from the guitar. And right. then it meets the guitar. Right. To, to, to amazing, amazing uh, results. But what I'm saying is that you, you don't need a guitar to be a musician. You can function as a musician walking in a street and be entirely musical about right. how you listen to the music, how how you already organize the music in your head. And, and when you take the guitar, you are going to go straight to, to what you're looking for, right? And if you don't know, as I said before, you are going to try to look for it to understand what you can do to learn what you don't know. This is how you expand your technique. That actually brings us to the next question um, from Todd Kreider, who's a, a very big fan of yours from Acoustic Guitar Magazine Forum and from our International Guitar Night YouTube site. You make music uh, on the guitar, but not necessarily music that's strictly for the guitar. And he was just wondering what the, what the nature of, what you feel the nature of the symbiosis between guitar and guitarist is that you need to have in order to play a Loudon or play a Ryan or now with the Springfield. Well, first, I mean, it has nothing to do with what guitar you play, which brand you play. Yeah. I mean, you, you feel, of course, the influence and inspired by a guitar, the sound, the look, the aesthetic aspect of a guitar, but ultimately, when you play the guitar, you don't see it. So the, the first thing, which is the most important, in my opinion, is not how the guitar looks, it's how the guitar sounds. So this is what I call the ornament of the guitar, mm -hmm. being the music. Right? Right, absolutely. Because at first the player doesn't look to his guitar, he, he listens to the guitar, he feels the guitar, he touches, he, he moves with it, he, 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 he moves the guitar in order to get sounds, to accompany the sounds of right. the notes which are produced. The people look at the guitar, but I mean, when you are in a concert, you, at, after a while you stop looking. Yes. 
you, you, you start maybe <laughs> possibly closing your eyes and, and really listen because what, what is there to look at right. after one hour and a half? Okay, you look at the musician, you look at the fingers, it's all very beautiful, it's, there is some, there is some, some uh, almost tragic, romantic uh, aspect to, to see a performance, you know, when, how is a musician sort of behaving with the music, does he close his eyes, does he open his eyes, does he move, where does he look, does he look to the neck, I mean, all those things, right, but uh, the symbiosis between the guitar and the music comes, and I repeat, from the music. And, and the guitar is there to serve that purpose. You know, each guitar has a unique way to, to draw you into it. Yeah. I mean, it's like, find me, play me, if you will, if you dare. Right. <laughs> find me, touch me. How do you touch me? I know my sound is there, find it. If you know how to touch me, you're going to get a lot of, out of me. You know, each yeah. guitar sort of calls you and I think it's very an interesting, very musical process to, to, to try to really um, uh, make the guitar talk, whatever it is, whatever challenge. Right. And um, to look for, for the frequencies, to look for the harmonics, where they are, how you, how you touch the strings, how you bend the note, how, how, how you, you keep the sustain of the strings, the notes, the history of the note as long as possible, and have all the notes coming and, and share that history of sound. Each guitar is going to have a different way to serve that purpose. Yeah. Right? So that's why I was very attracted to Laudan right from the beginning. But after a while, I felt like, let's try something else. Let's try a different instrument. So Kevin Ryan came into the play, and it was fantastic. Then I, I, then I unfortunately, four years after that, I touched my Laudan again. I never touched my Ryan since, because my Laudan is 30 years old. It's like it, be, it starts to become like a an amazing piece of furniture, you know, like a Stradivarius. Um, and with the Greenfield, I mean, do you, what, what you're, it's just simply part of your process that's keeping you moving along and inspired well, to try this one out now, for, right? For a long time, I really wanted to play a jazz guitar, but the neck was never suited for me, for my right hand. I wanted to play with my fingers. So I, want, I needed a, a wider neck and, um, I needed, a, in fact, a, a neck as if it was an acoustic guitar. And so this is what just Michael Greenfield did for me. He it, it did the, the perfect combination between uh, arch top and jazz guitar with an acoustic neck. And it sounds different from an arch top, completely different from an acoustic guitar. It's closer to a jazz guitar, but at the same time, it's not exactly a jazz guitar, but it's no longer an acoustic guitar. So it really sonically take, takes me to play things that I will never address the same way on my Loudon. This next question is from Don Alder, actually. Don the, Alder, the yeah, hello and, Don. <laughs> yeah, he's a Winfield champion. And what he wondered was, I mean, your music is constantly evolving, and he was just wondering what, um, what composition would you like to be remembered for if you had only one to choose from a <laughs> hundred years from now? A hundred, a hundred years from now? Oh, that's a tough question. I don't know. Is he one which does not exist yet? And um, Larry Pattis from Acoustic Guitar Hello, Forum. Hello, Larry. <laughs> he, he had a question for you, which is, right. um, uh, the guitar book is a masterpiece in the world. You know, it's the, one of the first fingerstyle guitar method books out there. And it's, you know, still a classic today that many, most fingerstyle guitar instructors recommend to their students. But he was wondering if you have plans to publish a, a method book or DVD uh, to follow the legendary guitar book. It's all related to time, time being of essence. Now I'd rather focus my time on composing, okay. recording. You can spend your life writing books about, you know, the way of doing, doing this, the way of doing that. It's people to remember that the music is not going to be done by somebody else and them, and that they do have to fulfill the path of deeply questioning themselves about what they do, how they do it. And, and try to, to find this very intimate relationship with their instruments that no tutor, no book, no teacher is going to give them.